Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be covering uh, Felix player NCMB here from KR. Felix has been a character that's been getting a lot more attention recently after the last patch. So we're here now to try and take a look and see what's happening with Felix. How are you doing today, Amir? I'm um, doing really good. Getting to see uh, some Felix gameplay, something that I've been missing from NA as we've lost a few of our Felix players, but... Getting to see, I think there is now four players in the top 30 of KR playing Felix. It makes me think that the previous buff he just got getting, uh, I think it was five, uh, five extra shield per, per stack on his, uh, on his passive and then an extra 5% onto that shield as well. Um, this character is possibly getting like somewhere between 50 to 150 extra shield every time he procs his passive at 10 stacks. Which and is crazy. I think KR, yeah, KR is starting to realize that he is able to do a lot more with people building full crit, I think is the majority of players, and uh, and still outputting so much damage without falling on the floor instantly, which is what I know a lot of Felixes were kind of sad about before, not being able to play the previous bruiser or tank builds. For sure. And yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a really interesting part here is I think maybe that patch change is really brought a lot more spotlight to it and that's kind of why we want to take a look at felix today where there's just so many of them right now in the top high end of kr performing really well this comp is a little interesting i mean we've got aya as our back line and then we have lenny as our support for the team so felix kind of being that solo front line but i do believe we're going to still be seeing him playing the traditional like damage oriented crit base yeah, I'd like to see some sort of like a pick comp coming out from them. I'm looking for Felix to go forward as we actually just see them jumping on the Lenny, unable to kill the Lenny as Felix is outputting so much damage. Aya wasn't even over here yet. Um, we're just autoing over to the Aiden, trying to kill him through the false oath as we're able to. Um, like we're already seeing how much damage he can output. He's able to weave so many skills in, throwing the E for the cooldown reduction. Felix is, he's a character that takes so much thinking because knowing which third ability to throw out every time is, it, it's somewhat difficult because you throw out the wrong ability and now your entire fight is, is going the wrong way. Exactly. There's a lot of thought process for it. And also just a lot of uh, playing around your max range, being able to get those double hits every time that you're autoing. And I mean, that last fight, I mean, Felix got completely ignored and it really showed because he was able to just shred through uh, the enemy team. Yeah, and as you were saying, like, I think we've seen sweet spots in other MOBAs um, with abilities. Looking at things like, uh, I think, Aatrox Q and League, where there's a spot that you are optimally hitting. But in terms of sweet spots on auto attacks, I don't think it's been seen too often on many characters where you get this much of a benefit. Where Felix essentially doubles the stacks he gets, and he's also looking for more damage. As yeah, we're playing around the sweet spot perfectly, almost getting only double hits. Looking for the ult, unable to connect to the Q after, that I think would have been able to kill. But we just have so much shielding coming out. I don't even think our Lenny was looking at us during that fight, but we were solo sustaining two people. Yeah, we were solo sustaining a 2v1. Was that really the new passive, like just giving him shielding? Because he just felt like, I felt like that Felix just did not lose HP. I mean, he performed so well with the spacing, like you mentioned, getting all those double procs, dodging some uh, major abilities there coming out from the characters, but just face tank Bianca's like full damage output as if it was nothing. Yeah, I honestly think this passive buff might have been a bit too much, and we might be seeing some possible nerfs in the next patch because. If Felix is playing full crit and uh, and dealing this much damage, then he might need to see a, a couple changes. But we do see our Aya fall on the floor. We're seeing so much damage come out from our Felix, though, putting Hedgen on the floor right after. Yeah, Went I mean, it looked kill. bad, but he immediately just it was able to push forward, take down the Hedgen, didn't get scared, never backed off. I think this is really common in like KR playstyles where they're w they're willing to try and take that that gameplay check and just see, you know what? It's looking bad. I'm not going to run. I'm going to take down someone and then I'm going to leave the fight, right? And it can lead to some uh, some fast days, but it can also lead to some good plays where, you know, they traded basically one for two there. Lost the objective, but at the end of the day, more RP for at least getting one kill. Yeah, and it's a fight that would have been a two for zero or possibly a one for zero previously. So 
Just getting that extra bit of RP. We're not losing too much because the fight was already lost. We're just going to a different zone, grab some farm, and uh, yeah, I think were we actually able to? I think kill the Camillo that uh, was contesting us over here, as our team was able to two v one him. And yeah, it looks like we're just gonna possibly be buying some items. I wonder what our first transition is though. Getting a mithril or our weapon <laughs> possibly i think yeah i'm not sure exactly where we're putting the the mithril yet but we'll we'll see where where this ends up going yeah it's uh okay yeah, it is for weapon as he's buying the spear and uh gonna connect to those two together i'm actually surprised we're going weapon first as i previously thought that felix was pretty big on going something like um beautiful garment or uh either switching between alexander's or racing boots but i guess the swift strides is just that much of an upgrade maybe they also like the 0 0.04 movement speed on it it's a lot of movement speed you're getting from this allowing you to weave in and out of these fights yeah and i mean a character like felix who already has a pretty nice bit of mobility and also utilizing that mobility to be able to play at max range is definitely probably what they're looking to do to utilize with it so it definitely makes sense i mean it seems like a really strong upgrade for them and i wonder if our it seems like our aya somehow knows oh sadly we won't check all the way to go and see if they're fighting over there i think we're gonna go grab this free gas station battle zone and uh probably move on over either down into fire station and farm down or we're gonna go alley and uh contest I don't know, the bears and uh, and some of the boar spawns. I wouldn't be surprised if we see them go to the TP and TP for like factory or warehouse. But yeah, I mean, bear farm would probably be the safest play if we're talking about macro decisions because they already know that archery bears should be up. But we are looking at a TP. Where is it? It's the beach, the beach farm. Yeah, we're going to go get beach bear res respawns. This has been a zone that everyone has loved for a while, going for the mutant bear spawns alongside possibly picking up three extra bears um actually i think is it four bears still or did they remove the bear up in uh up by hotel as well no. i i'm not sure um the bear yeah because we had the big change to all the animal spots um and we still have the three bears down on the bottom side of beach alongside the coast but we had a couple changes to, we now have wolves up uh, right above us. And I think the bear to our left of the wolves is sadly not with us anymore. But we can go forest and grab the bear up here. Correct. Yeah, actually, it's it's crazy because, like, as you mentioned, Beach has been, like, the go-to bear farming zone for a long time. And it's kind of crazy to say, but places like Chapel have sort of become better than Beach in bear farming now and it's hard to imagine but there are now some new zones that have gotten some more love that sort of compete on the same level of what beach bears were yeah uh, people used to know archery for being the wolf zone and now archery just has two bears and two wolves we have the same amount of bears as we do wolves in that zone which changes a lot of how people play the macro um there's a lot of different choices and where you go on some of those night changes um for but certain. I think P Temple and Beach have been always the go-to. People will always choose those two. But it looks like we might be going for a fight here. Blinking forward. Sad oh my god, we're able to connect the W after the ult. But I don't think we have anything else to keep going. No, not able to chase it off there. I mean, Aya's not with us. But they did get an RNG now. We did get an actual uh, meteor from that as well, which is nice. <laughs> it looks like this will be slamming into our beautiful garment. And uh, looks like we stand on, uh, sorry, I'm forgetting the name of the item now, um, our headpiece for a while longer, um, basically just looking for that heel cut, not really needing to switch, yeah, cowboy hat being a pretty well statted item, but we're also not actually grouped with our team, I don't know if we know that they're looking for a fight above us and we're gonna keep farming yeah i'm not 100 percent sure i'm not sure i think he's now aware and he's going to cut off now yeah he's looking to cut off now but definitely was a little weird we were a little split from our team for a bit there but we'll have to just see how this plays out like look at this like gap closing looks like he might be losing this fight but i mean Ekion is just so tanky but oh, oh this is looking terrible can he actually get away yeah. from this yeah the dash really away helping out uh i don't know if his choice of, uh, of targeting was amazing there, as we chose the Ekion who 
Red Echion is known for being somewhat of a strain tank, being very like a hyper mobile character with the ability to start like running circles around us. And I understand that Felix is another character that is hyper mobile and running circles, but uh, at the moment, Echion is looking very good. His stats are very high, and I don't know if we have the current damage to deal with him. But we're also seeing a lot of healing come out from our Felix. I'm not sure exactly where it's all coming from, but during that fight, he was just he just kept going up, and his health just I am not sure. Yeah, I mean, he was able to stay. I mean, it was scary to watch though because that Echion for sure was definitely putting in a lot of pressure and a lot of damage towards him. And it didn't look like we were able to actually pierce through his tankiness, but we also were able to still sustain, even though that Ekion was doing a ton of damage. And again, we're not on like a tanky build. This isn't like a tanky Felix playing frontline. This is still heavy damage crit Felix trying to maximize damage output while just running with a support and a backliner. Yeah, compared to other melees, we're somewhat low on our defensive stats, being 2,400 HP and 120 for uh, defense. We're, we have a lot of attack power, though, which is one of the benefits. We have 306 attack power, and we're critting, we're double auto-attacking. This is, like, we have a lot of damage coming out. It, if people get caught by us, they should be on the floor, as we did see that Hedgen in the temple at the beginning of the game. It'll be a lot faster this time. Oh, absolutely. We'll be able to see some crazy pressure. So I'm, I'm excited to watch where some of these other plays come in because, yeah, again, you know, little unfortunate team wasn't super grouped. They are minus 500 from that last play. Felix being literally the only one with items on the team right now that's going to be able to help try and, like, control a fight. So we'll have to see how NCMB kind of, like, utilizes the fact that he is essentially the carry at this point. Yeah, I mean, looking at a lot of these fights, he is trying to take the... Oh, sorry, I was about to wonder if uh, if they realized that he dropped the meteorite. But yeah, he is taking a bit more of a leadership role in a lot of these fights, going really far forward, trying to make sure that he at least trades one for one. Just trying to see, say, like, I have the hands, and I'm going to put one of you on the floor unless you can skill check me. Yeah, and right and now, just trying to space away. Dodges the actual five omen, but now I think he's just going to die here, right? Yeah. Yeah, sadly, we're taking a lot of these fights really split. We're not really grouped as a team uh, in this fight. Like, we went downwards while our team kept going upwards to the left, and we just end up trying to take a 1v3. And unfortunately, we sadly are crit, don't have the defense, and are put on the floor by Hedge and Marcus and Jackie. Yeah, I mean, a little unfortunate. I mean, it looks like we're going to have to do another red buy. We're taking the... Uh... The safe play just get the team back we're gonna have, to have another fight but again i mean it did look bad but felix played that fight so well i mean if he had his team there or his, if the other two went to try and push the team and he had the 1v1 he definitely could have won that i mean he dodged the five omen perfectly with the with the engage and also was able to just put a lot of pressure on the hedge and as it looks like we're coming in for a third party at this point yeah, it looks like Felix is going to connect the W. I think they're going to come back. Lenny denying the Camilla revive. But yeah, our Felix is just going forward, going to the back line, trying to go one for one. Lyan is trying to stat check them, but the fear is coming out. And then that is, he was able to dodge anything that she would be throwing out by throwing the E at the end. It's a lot of damage coming out. I got kind of scared when he started auto attacking the Alex while he was... Uh, doing Tonfa D skill, but luckily he was able to make it out from, uh, if, from that if, one. if this Felix has taught me anything, it is that he's living on the edge, and I am terrified at every moment thinking that somehow this game is going to be a wipe, and he's going to go fast six now. Yep, but the eye is actually falling on the floor. We got our headpiece going Halo online, as we're a character that spams abilities. We're just going to see him trying to weave a lot of these auto attacks in between his abilities, going for the knock up here, denying anything that his opponents would be able to do. And as you said, he's just living on the edge. He goes forward, ignores his backline, just trying to say, hey, I'm going to walk up, kill all three of you, and you can't do anything about it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like you mentioned, he's running Halo right now. Oh, gosh, no way. Lenny is buying in red again. <laughs> this team is bought in Chapel to get back their team. I think they're minus, like, what, like, 1,000 now? 
Um, yeah, they bought twice, and they had to buy the Felix, and then now they're buying the Aya. That is minus 1,000, as our Felix is on his own, again, trying to dodge some of these abilities coming out. But I think that we're safe for now. Gonna regroup and then try and take the fight together. Yeah, I think we've officially established Cemetery as the gauntlet. You have to yeah, fight. I mean... You have to fight to the death in the gauntlet of Cemetery at this rate, because this team is non-stop just in these brawls here. We haven't left in a while. We just keep buying in Chapel every time to have a reset of a match. I'm surprised that we're not buying in, uh, sorry, in a hospital at all. We're just always going to Chapel. It's our safe place. We don't want anyone to fight us and it's the safe play to play, to make every time. But we're gonna see a blink come out from Lyan. Are Aya getting caught, sadly? We might actually have to make a swap over to a hospital instead. Okay. It's not gonna be a chapel buy, but that is minus 1,250. Oh, and <laughs> we, I mean, okay, we still have enough for her. We can still use our own credits, but <laughs> that is always a play that uh, it gets me scared sometimes. That but, is yeah, actually can... crazy. The Felix is like, you know what? I, I'm buying myself an item. I don't trust you. <laughs> It's a solo queue mentality, he is carrying the team, he's going in for a lot of the fights, and it's very hard to play for this Aya as we're playing Crit Felix, like, we we need to be making these 1v9 plays, trying to smurf every fight, and we might see something, the Aya actually doing a lot of damage coming out there, and then our Felix cleaning up, going in for some auto attacks, I think we should just have the damage to clean it, yep, and his ability to weave a lot of these auto attacks between abilities is just so insane, like, a lot of the time, he's Q instantly autoing and then Q again. Oh, especially with a high attack speed. I mean, he goes up to like 2.4. So he's constantly autoing and he's trying to make sure that he gets yeah, as much value as possible in between them. But like, it, that is that is crazy. He didn't finish his blood craft at the time. He didn't have the credits to buy the materials. He, so he was kind of waiting. So he fought without that. And even with like Aya getting caught, the fear from Aya, he was just able to fully like clean this fight up. Just doing so much damage. I think actually... This comp's working out for the simple fact that Aya has this massive target on her back. So Felix is able to just play the game however he wants. And Aya just has to suffer the entire game. She has the most miserable life in this team comp. But it's all in the glory of winning. Yeah. Sadly, you can't play your role every game. And uh, Aya's traditional role is to deal damage. But this game, she is the taunt. She is our AoE tank. We need to make sure that Aya runs in. Gets the ta gets the taunt. We go in from the back, assassinate everyone. We start doing our DPS. Yeah, and then Aya's only other job is live as long as she can. You know, la the more you last, the better. Yeah, and we do connect to W3. Whoa. W3 again. And we're just able to put him on the floor after with uh, a couple auto attacks, which is very massive as it's day five. They can't get a revive. It looks like one of them jumped over and is now getting third partied. We might actually see an escape from the Vanya, which I think is their only option. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they have, yeah, they can definitely escape here. Definitely not going to look good otherwise, because yeah, right now they know there's a team in Pond and they'd have to sneak through Pond back into Factory where the other team's going to be. So not going to be looking good. Now, one thing that's crazy there is that utilization of his gap closer. Emma, one of the most slipperiest characters in the game, not able to get away from him as he does double max range, like, leaps into the into her. Yeah, it's very surprising to see a lot of this. Uh, he's just going forward a lot of the time. It feels very solo queue. Um, while watching a lot of high low players, it, like, sometimes, especially when they're pro players, you see they play a bit more of a methodical game. Um, NCMB is just, he goes forward, decides to fight people, and is having fun doing it. Exactly. And I mean, like you mentioned, this is, I think, more of a solo queue mentality. It's it's definitely an effective play in solo queue. You for sure wouldn't probably see something like this in, in competitive play. But where it is solo queue, a lot of times you can hand check people. You can... You, you can play that risky play. The teams aren't as coordinated. They're not going to be on the same page about certain fights. You're able to just sort of uh, play around the fray of destruction. You're buying a blood. We've just gotten two bloods. We've ha How did we manage? I'm hoping that this one is going to our teammates. How did we Hopefully manage we realize. double blood? We, we bought this. This Felix has bought double blood after we have gone minus 1,250 on buying back teammates. 
I mean, since we last checked in on their kills, I think they were 7 kills and now they're 18. So they've been racking up a lot of credits from wiping the rest of the lobby. Definitely paying towards it because, yeah, we do actually see Aya finally being rewarded, saying, Aya, you know what? You did a great job. Here's a sniper rifle from yeah, the blood of our enemies. It's nice because our Lenny is also nearly full build. You would like to see either a defensive option or like Persona coming out from, uh, from her headpiece. Maybe even Commander's headset because I love that item. Getting the uh, extra damage on auto attacks, getting the extra healing for our Helix. But yeah, it looks like our Felix is going to start playing around the edge of the fight. Our Lenny's actually playing for our Felix rather than our Aya. I think she has also decided that Felix is our carry. Blinking forward, trying to look for something, almost putting Bianca on the floor instantly. Also dealing amazing damage to the And perfectly, like, Ekion. dodges out the all, doesn't go to the all. I mean, Ekion, everyone has to run for their lives. And again, it's like we mentioned, right? Aya has been accepted as, you, Aya, you are the sacrifice. Like, just... Just be annoying, look juicy, and we'll take care of the rest. And I mean, Aya played it perfect. Like, again, she knows that her team's not going to play for her, so she's playing for herself. And it's it's that kind of uh, play style that can work out really well. Yeah, and she's actually able to take out the Aiden here. Being able to go forward. I think Aya's just going to oh. run around this fight while Felix just auto-attacks everyone to death. What an incredible display of Felix. And I think you're right, though. I think those shield buffs definitely make him much tankier maybe we're gonna see some more uh felix is actually sneak in here well guys i hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you in the next one